Hello everyone, welcome to this week's After Effects scripting tutorial. In this week's tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a 2D to 3D scene converter. This will essentially take any scene you give it, make sure that there's a camera in it, and then convert all of the two dimensional layers and push them out into 3D space. And this will do it on a random basis, just anywhere from one to 100,000 Z values, or just a standard deviation every so many that we set it. So just to test this out real quick, I have a composition here with a ton of different colored solids, all in two dimensions. And if I click on my composition and convert, it's going to then space them out into Z space evenly for me like this, which is a nice effect. And you can set how far apart you want them to be as well. Then we also have the option to do a random distribution. And if I click on this, it's going to create a much more dramatic effect and uh, we can set how crazy we want these effects to be all inside of the script. So today's code is only going to be less than 50 lines of code, and it's going to be able to do a lot of different things for you. So to get started, open a new JavaScript file, and we're going to start by creating this very basic user interface. I'll create a variable called main window, which is equal to a new window, which is going to be the type palette. The text is going to say 2D to 3D or something like that and the size is gonna be undefined. Then I'll set the orientation of the main window to be column from top to bottom. And then I'm not really gonna to need to make a group for each of these buttons or checkboxes here. I'm just gonna make uh, two elements that go into the main window directly. So I'll create a variable called random checkbox, and I'll also create a one called uh, convert button. And these are both gonna be added to our main window so I'll say main window dot add. We're gonna add a checkbox for this one, the undefined size, and the text is gonna say random. And then for the convert button, same thing, we're gonna set this equal to the main window. And this time we're gonna add a button, same thing with undefined size, and the text will just say convert. And then to make sure our very basic UI is working, I'll grab the window variable, center it, and then I'll grab it again and show it. As you can see, our UI is looking pretty much exactly the same. Now all that's left to do is implement the main thing into the script, which is making sure everything is set up properly beforehand and then applying the 3D measures to it. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our convert button, which is the only thing that's going to actuate anything. We're gonna say on click, we're gonna do a function. Well, the first thing we need to do is make sure that we actually have a composition open because uh, if we create a new composition, there's going to be no layers to convert to 3D. So let's just make sure that they have an assumed composition open already. So to do this, I'll create an if statement, and we're going to check if a composition is active. So I'll say if app.project.activeItem is equal to null, if nothing's up in the forefront of the program, or if app.project.activeItem is not, because we have this exclamation mark at the beginning, an instance of a comp item, and then we want to alert, please open a comp first, and we'll return false to leave this uh, on click function. So this is basically saying, if the current active item open in After Effects isn't uh, anything, and it's not a composition, then open a comp first, please, and then we can continue. So assuming that, we can now basically send it off into the main function that's going to do everything for us. Uh, before that, though, I'm going to enclose it in an undo group. So I'll say app.begin undo group, and we'll just call this uh, conversion. And then we'll end it with an app.end undo group. And anything we put inside of here will be undoable with one click. So the main function we're going to create is called convert scene, and there's only two variables we're going to bring in. The first of which is going to be our composition that we have now confirmed is open. So I'll say app.project.activeItem. And then we also want to get the value of our checkbox. If it's checked, we want to kind of randomize the distance between everything. And if it's not checked, we want it to be very uniform. So we need to know what the value of that is by getting random checkbox.value. And then down below all of this, we'll define our convert scene function, bringing in our composition variable and what we'll just call the random bool, which means it's going to be either true or false, um, whether or not this uh, checkbox is checked. 
All right, so the first thing we need to do to ensure that everything works properly is that we have a camera for all of our 3D stuff to work with properly. So I'll create a variable called camera, and I'll set this equal to a custom function called create camera. We're gonna create that camera in our composition, so I'll use that as an argument. So again, we're gonna create another function, create camera, with our composition coming in as a variable. Now this is not just going to no matter what, create a camera. We're gonna loop through all the layers and first check if there's a camera. If there's not a camera, then we'll create one. So what we'll do is run through here. I'm also gonna create a variable called camera and we're gonna go var i is equal to one and i is less than comp.num layers i plus plus. We're gonna loop through all the layers and we're simply gonna say if comp.layer i dot property zoom we're going to check if the zoom property, if it's not equal to null, meaning that the zoom property exists, it's definitely a camera, then camera is equal to our comp.layer i. Then we know if we've gone through this whole for loop and we've looked through all the layers, if it hasn't found anything with the zoom property, there's no camera yet. This camera variable is going to be null, meaning that there's no camera. We need one though. So if our camera is equal to null, we're gonna create a camera by saying camera is equal to comp.layers.addCamera. And when we add a camera, we just need to have a name for it and then this point of interest, which is basically half of the comp width and half of the comp height, which we can simply get by saying comp.width times 0.5 and comp.height times 0.5. And that needs to be enclosed in uh, brackets so that it knows it's uh, XY. So we're going into our convert scene function and we're making sure if we have a camera, we grab that variable and if we don't, we create it. And at the end of all this, we're going to return our camera. So no matter what, we've either created a camera or found one, it's going to give us that for our variable here. And now all that's left to really do is loop through any layers in our composition and from there apply either a random or a uniform Z position change to them. So what I'll do, is loop through my composition again. I'll say var i is equal to one, and for i is less than or equal to our comp.num layers, increment i by one. And we're gonna do a very simple check here. Uh, the first one is we're gonna check if our random bool is equal to true. If it is, we wanna do something, else we're gonna do the more uniform thing. So if random bool is equal to true, this is checked else it's not checked. Well, in any of these cases, we want to make sure the layer is 3D. So inside of each of these, I'm gonna say if comp.layer_i.3d layer is equal to false, we wanna convert it to 3D by saying comp.layer_i.3d layer is equal to true, and make sure you use only one equals so we can set the value. So I'll copy and paste this into the else statement as well because if it's not random, we also wanna make sure all the layers are 3D as well. And then after we've converted any given layer that's not 3D to a 3D layer, we now need to just change the Z position. So I'll grab my layer and I'll grab the property called position and we're gonna set the value to something. And then I'll copy and paste this and put it into the else statement as well. Now this is where the randomization and the uniform Z position is gonna change. The first two values we don't wanna change because we'll keep the X and Y where they're at. We just wanna sort of push them out. So to do this, we now know they're three dimensional. We know the position is gonna require three different values, one for the X, one for the Y, and one for the Z. So inside of brackets for each of the set values, we need to put in an X, Y, and a Z. Now, since I didn't wanna change the first two, the X and the Y, I'm just going to grab them. So I'll say comp.layer_i.property_position.value index zero, which is the x position, comma, and then I'm going to, although kind of long, I'm going to copy and paste this and say one. So this is going to be the first value is going to get the original x, the second value is going to get the original y, and the third value in this case is our under a random bool, so we need to just give it a random Z position. In the original example, I used a range of one to 100,000, so I'm going to just copy and paste that code in here. So for the third value, which is our Z, 
I'm going to say math.floor, which rounds any number, random between one and 100,000. So each time through here, it's going to take our layer and randomize the Z position anywhere from one to 100,000. And then I'll go ahead and copy and paste everything in the brackets here and paste it in the else statement. And the only difference is in our else statement, we don't want it to be random for the Z. Instead, what we're going to do is a custom formula. We're gonna say every next layer, we wanna go the same amount. So in order to do a simple formula like this, we'll take our I and multiply it by say 750. And this would say every time through, the first time through it's gonna say I equals one, one times 750 is 750. So the first Z position is gonna be 750. The next time through it's gonna say I is actually two. So two times 750 is the next and it's gonna keep going and going and going. So at this point, our code should be mostly written. Let's go ahead and test it, see if it works. We're gonna first start off with a, the regular convert without the random, and it wants us to first open a comp. Now, we've created a camera, and if we move our camera here, you can see all the layers are nice and uh, added 750 pixels after the other. If I quickly undo it and click on random, I'm also going to get a similar awesome effect that randomizes the positions anywhere from zero to 100,000. And of course you can go back in and adjust these values to adjust how intense you want the randomization to be or how intense you want the distribution to be. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed guys. That's how to make a 2D to 3D scene converter script for After Effects. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out every Monday and Thursday. Thanks again for watching guys. We'll see you next time.